Some of the fry are getting pretty big, and I think I could go ahead and separate them from the parents. I'm also trying to avoid certain males from breeding with uh, the new females. Moved them to the uh, 55 planted. This one also gets a little bit of window light. Threw some food in there. It's probably too much, but there are snails in here, and it'll probably be it will probably be okay. Quick update on these. This one's still the same. Just got the two little plants that are starting to perk up. Uh, this one was the one where I rinsed the gravel. It's about the same on camera. This one's a little more clear. It's better from up here, but I planted some of the water sprite and we're gonna keep an eye on it to see what happens. It didn't go well in the, the other tank, but I'm optimistic. So one thing I'm noticing here with this tank is a lot of what I throw in there ends up not eaten by the guppy fry. The issue is that could get moldy and lead to algae because this tank gets that light and there's a window that provides sunlight. So I gotta be careful. I don't want this tank to become an algae farm. I do have some snails in here, but they're not populated enough to eat all of this quickly. Also, the plant load is not quite big enough to offset this waste. So what I'm planning to do is take some of the big Anubius plants in other tanks to the, increase the plant load so that so that algae doesn't take hold. For snails to add, I'm focusing on one like this one because it has some blue shelling and that's a trait I'm looking for. I if you if you follow me on Instagram, I have kind of selectively bred these ram's horns to have kind of a blue shell, but I've gone away from it because well, I had a bunch of tanks and I moved a bunch of stuff around, so they're not as pure as I've had them in the past, but that's something I'd like to bring back. So this female guppy right here, you can see it has a crooked tail. I'm going to have to move that to the coal tank with the angelfish. It should be fine. The other females are okay when they're and they're, they're still birthing babies. So it, it shouldn't be an issue. And so this java fern, this is my mother java fern plant. It's massive. It's creative. Other plants and that plant in particular, which is turning into a mother as well. Uh, but anyway, I'm looking at this smaller java fern plant. It's a, actually, I don't think it's a java fern, but it's it's some kind of fern and it's it's a smaller plant and it's not doing so well because it's getting overtaken by this mother plant. Um, I also have another one there, but I'm gonna keep it there for now. I have a couple other smaller ones in another tank, but I think I'm gonna take this one out, split it, glue it to something and throw it in there. You can also see with this mother plant that it has a baby coming off of it so I'm going to go ahead and pluck that out and throw it into the other tank as well. Here's the 20 shrimp tank and the male tank of the guppy strain I'm working on. So this plant right here, it's got a, uh, it has a baby. I guess there's, there's multiple mother plants in this one from the same java fern. So I'm going to go ahead and move some of those over, over as well. It's going to be a lot of gluing, but it should be fun. I'm also going to try to move this sponge filter over to that tank. It has plenty of plants on it. And quick update with the blackbeard algae on this. I don't like how all of the debris, which there's no fish in here now, but all of the debris, whatever it is, is crowding around this rock, which has this plant that's suffering from blackbeard algae. So this is probably a stagnant kind of area. Maybe I should move it. Uh, I'm not sure what to do about it right now, but I'm keeping an eye on it. It's kind of swelling right there. Another example of the snails I'm trying to make in here. The nice blue purple shell that just kind of happened by accident, but I've kind of been segregating to make this happen. Sponge filter is plopped in there. I'm not sure if it's going to work out. It looked more attached than the other tank, but that's probably because it had a high flow or a high pull on the water that gets sucked in it. Anyway, so this is the Anubius, uh, I think one dead eye. That was the one from the other tank. I, I split it up into three different plants. There's that one, that one, and that one's bigger one. Oh, then there's another one over there. So four plants. 
And once they get going, they'll look good. Um, they're a little sideways because of the way I've glued them, but they should eventually be upright. There's that snail again. I also added some of the uh, random Anubius babies I have. There's one right there, one right there, uh, another one in the corner. Hopefully it helps prevent algae in the future. So it looks like these two are fighting. And it's kind of weird because these two were kind of mating and when I first got them, they, they were cleaning surfaces to maybe try to breed, but now it looks like they're fighting each other. It's kind of weird. I don't know what's going on. I just, I just did a water change. Quick update on the Anubius. The Blackbeard algae is back. You can see it right there on the stem on that leaf to the right. Uh, the plant overall is pretty healthy. It's that light green leaf in the middle is new and it's, it's growing in nicely. Uh, I think what I'm going to do is gonna, I'm going to pluck that leaf with the black stem from the black beard and then probably dip it the whole thing in some hydrogen peroxide maybe like 30 seconds I'm gonna go ahead and pluck this leaf here doesn't really focus that well anyway there's the black beard so I'm gonna pluck this one too because it's also got has some black beard Just, there we go I plucked two of the leaves plenty of leaves and I'm gonna dip it in here maybe 30 seconds this is hydrogen peroxide and let's pop it back into the tank all right looks a lot better without all those black leaves so i'm gonna keep an eye on it for a couple of weeks and hopefully that'll kill the black beard update on this tank i think this is a 35 gallon i have some pogo stem and octopus right there planted see some new growth at the tippy top it, it seems to be doing well um, i just have aquarium gravel and then there was this weird aquarium soil that I uh, picked up off a guy on offer up or something. Uh, this other piece of pogo stem and this smaller piece has been floating for months now and it just dropped which is interesting so that means that should mean I can plant it. Uh, I want to test pogo stem in, in this tank right here it's the dirted tub and see how it does. I'm gonna probably try to plant it in that corner back there back right corner it might do better since it can feed from its roots just got it planted not looking too great but we'll keep an eye on it in the next few weeks quick update on this tank this is the 35 tall looks like got some algae back there on the back wall um, that was actually that's actually the side and then there's some on the back wall here, and then some on this side as well. Just seems to be only on the glass, which is a good sign. Um, I think part of it has to do with the light being on the back side and, and this window that shines on the back of the tank when the sun's out. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna turn this sponge filter higher or the air going down to the sponge filter higher uh, to increase the flow and I could do that from a valve on that airdrop up there by adjusting that valve possibly adjusting some of the ones next to it to give it more airflow I'm also going to add more plants for a higher plant load uh, I also noticed this Apatna Geaton is perking up a lot more now that I moved this sponge that was in the way of the sunlight, so that might help. Uh, but increasing the plant load really helps with consuming excess nutri nutrients that the algae feeds off of. Another technique is to add floating plants, which is kind of what was done up here. Having a ton of floating plants really helps compete with algae. The reason I don't want to do it in this tank is because I have new plants that I want to get established and that will block some of the light. So I want to at least fill this, at least fill the floor before adding floating plants if that doesn't work. The Crenum hasn't really died out yet. Looks like it's dying out. Uh, if you guys saw one of the first videos when I put it in, I put a root tab in between these two plants. So I'm hoping it starts to make a recovery soon. I know when you move these plants, they get very finicky and they die back and then regrow. 
they don't like to be moved. They don't. They're not big on change. So we'll see how that turns out. Also, I ordered some new plants from the aquarium co-op. Got some crypt lucens. That's this one right here. Haven't used, haven't had these before, but I think this is going to be an easy plant. Planning to put this in the dirt tank and maybe a non dirt tank as well, depending on how many plants is in this little pot. Also picked up Bucephalandra. This is the black pearl version. And then there was another Bucephalandra. That one down there, which is the wavy green one. And I'm really excited about the Bucephalandras because they're kind of rare. The Bucephalandras are just like Anubius and Java Fern. And they like to grow on hardscapes such as wood or rocks or even aquarium decorations. So I'm going to find some pretty rocks because I don't have any driftwood right now to glue these. I also received from the co-op the Dwarf Sagittaria. Still in the pot. I'm going to go ahead and remove it, see if I can split a few plants and plant these in the dirted tub. They kind of look like grass, but they don't get very tall. This is like the smaller version of Jungle Bow. Got the Dwarf Sag planted. Also got the Crypt planted in the back there. Made a little bit of a mess. It'll settle out in a minute. I also ordered some of the air valve drops from the co-op. That goes on the system up there for pumping air. And an extra bottle of Easy Green. I still have some left, but it's running out. I just wanted to make sure I didn't run out. Quick update on the Pogo Stem and Octopus. You can see right here that the light green leaves were there when it was originally planted. And you can see there's dark green leaves coming up as new growth. It seems to be growing towards the sunlight. But this makes me really happy because I was really worried about growing stem plants in this tank. And I'm not very good at stem plants. So I noticed this kind of spotted, speckled ram's horn snail. I might try to move that to a different tank and then try to isolate that trait. See if I can have a different strain for ram's horn snails because I think it's very interesting. This is something that would be interesting to play with. So I ended up separating the angelfish because they were fighting for some reason also, this Anubius is looking a lot better. It had some of the Blackbeard algae, so that's good. It seems like uh, hydrogen peroxide works if you dip it for a few seconds. Anyway, so I moved this guy. I'm going to move him back. I think what happened was, and I, I did some research online, is after a large water change, uh, angelfish fight because the, I guess their chemicals or hormones that establish their pecking order are diluted from the water change which means they have to redo their pecking order. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna just do smaller water change and top the water off so there's no big changes. Um, but when I move them back, they're gonna be fighting for a little while. So this guppy keeps getting kind of stalked because the other guppies think it's a female. It looks like a male, but it has the body shape of a female. I don't know if it's like a trans thing or what, but uh, yeah, so I need to move this fish. It's just, they just don't leave this one alone. They they are some of the males are getting pretty though. They look pretty good on camera. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and move this to a coal tank where I have the other fish that I don't want to breed so they can live their lives. So I attached more plants to uh, rocks. I got some of the new beautiful landra spread out across multiple tanks and floating in other tanks. Uh, but here's this one right here. I put it on the nicest rock that I had, the prettiest one. It's probably not a good idea to have white rocks because they might turn green because of algae. So, quick update to the tank down here. Well, I don't like having those baskets back there. I'll probably move those for at least shooting the videos. So, added a bunch of, a bunch more Java ferns. Uh, I had a lot floating apparently, so, and I still have more. So, I'm going to slowly keep adding. So I cover the bottom. I'll try to keep them away from this plant right here so they don't have to compete. Uh, but yeah, and hopefully when these get going, they can compete better with the algae on the glass. I should probably also remove it at some point. 